Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world, and welcome to today's DevOps.com webinar, brought to you by TechStrong, Red Hat Marketplace, and CrowdStrike. My name is Cody J. Brown, and I'm the host of TechStrong Learning. We have an exciting presentation ahead, but before we begin, I have just a few housekeeping notes. Today's session is being recorded, so if you miss any of our discussion today, the on-demand will be made available shortly after we conclude the webinar today. Um, if you look on the right side of your screen, you'll see a Q&A tab. This is where we want you to send in any questions you might have for our speakers today. And if you have any um, comments or anything to add to the discussion, we want you to direct those comments to the chat tab. We will also have a couple polls that will pop up throughout today's discussion. So keep an eye out for whenever those come out because our speakers would really like your feedback on those. And finally, the slides from today's presentation can be downloaded using the handouts panel that's also located on the right side of your screen. My last note, at the conclusion of our webinar today, we will have a drawing for four $25 Amazon gift cards. So on to our topic of discussion today. We'll be covering proactive threat hunting in Red Hat environments with CrowdStrike. And I'm joined by Carlos Mat Matos, Solutions Architect at CrowdStrike, and Musa Musayev, Engineering Manager of Cloud Integration at, at CrowdStrike. And at this point in time, it's my pleasure to turn the floor over to our two esteemed speakers to get us started. Thank you guys so much for being here with me today. Thank you, Cody, for that introduction. Um, and thank you, audience, for joining us for this webinar on proactive threat hunting in Red Hat environments at the CrowdStrike. My name is Musa Masayev. I'm an engineering manager at CrowdStrike, uh, focused on cloud integrations. And I'm joined today by my solution architect, Carlos Matos. Um, and he is the author of many service integrations and partner integrations that we have here with CrowdStrike as well. So <clears throat> going over the roadmap of this webinar, uh, we're gonna be focusing on reviewing some of the security challenges that organizations face. Uh, we're gonna go through our CrowdStrike platform and learn about the ins, ins and outs. And we're going to take a look at the roadmap that we have with Red Hat Marketplace. Uh, we'll follow that up with a demo where we're gonna secure our workloads or Ansible collections and play with some malware. Um, and then we'll shift it over to Q&A um, and wrap it up. <clears throat> so um, thousands of our customers face very similar challenges. Uh, you have shadow IT where you have engineers in deploying in um, VMware, cloud, containers, and all those different varieties are causing a lack of visibility in your resources. Um, unauthorized usage, unsecured assets where deployments are done in non-standard ways, non-secured with agents and configuration settings that are pertinent to the security of your organization. As organizations are moving to cloud, uh, you know, cloud architectures are very diverse uh, with microservices, serverless, containers, all the new buzzwords, uh, it's getting harder and harder for organizations to keep track and to properly configure these resources. This leads to misconfigurations, you know, security inconsistencies, and even use of insecure APIs across your organization. And with runtime threats being um, running rampant with adversaries that are you know, skilled and targeting your organizations, they are using um, you know, advanced persistence threats, zero days that are easily accessible on dark web, um, and just you know, various known vulnerabilities that can cripple an organization that doesn't have the right security posture. Um, you know, toppled with skill shortages across the ecosystem, you know, cloud and security are new technologies that are not easy for individuals to wrap your head around and require a lot of um, rethinking about how you approach architectures and security postures um, when you switch from on-premise to cloud. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, that those are the skill sets that you need for just an infrastructure. But similarly, you need skill sets that are, you know, security focused and you need to have a very skilled SOC and security analysts to review all these threats. So, 
you know, these are challenges that our customers face, um, not from just an organizational level, but, you know, these are challenges that are true to heart of, you know, what, what us as DevOps individuals uh, face on a daily basis. And taking advantage of all these pain points are the swarm of adversaries across the world. So at the heart of every attack, uh, there's a human adversary, right? There are organizations that are uh, tailored to understand, you know, what they're doing, what their intent is, and they have the tools and the processes and systems to attack this. When you look at the types of adversaries, uh, you know, you can probably split them up into two, two kind of genres. So you have your state sponsored adversaries. Those are your, you know, your countries, you know, United States, Russia, China, North Korea. Um, and their, their focus is on strategic national security initiatives or espionage. Uh, and the other type of adversary that you're going to run into are e-crime syndicates. So these are your underground organizations, right, that are running ransomware, that are providing, uh, you know, services such as like access brokers. Um, these are the, you know, the, the adversaries that you're going to run into most. Um, according to our global threat report that CrowdStrike publishes uh, every year, E-crime syndicates account for about four out of the five attacks that we see. And these adversaries are targeting, you know, various verticals. You have government, energy, healthcare, education, finance, um, and you have technologies, right? And which is kind of where we as DevOps individuals uh, live and breathe. And funny enough, uh, the technology vertical is the highest targeted vertical that there is just because there is such a vast ecosystem of these unprotected workloads, these, you know, resources that fall under what we call shadow IT. And these adversaries are swift. Um, so here, you, you know, we're kind of outlining, you know, the top adversaries that we saw in 2021. And uh, a little backstory, we, we name our adversaries, uh, you know, with, with different key terms. So you have Bear, who is represented as Russia, Kolima, North Korea, China is Panda, Kit in Iran, and Spider, Eastern Europe. And so you see these uh, time measurements, and what these time measurements are indicating are breakout times. And so breakout times are really the, the point of time where an adversary gets into your um, into your organization and with a breach does, um, you know, ev evasive protections, um, does credential dumping, gets basically a scan of your entire environment. And it's essentially measured right up until the point where you have lateral movement. And so <clears throat> you can see, you know, these adversaries, once they break ground, you know, we, we saw a targeted attack by Bear that was able to infiltrate and perform lateral movement and perform the attack, data exfiltration, or whatever their intent is uh, within 18 minutes. Now, you know, that is a little bit rare, but it shows you just how aggressive and sophisticated these adversaries are. Um, so, you know, some of the other uh, averages are around two hours to four hours is kind of what we see with mature organizations that, you know, have the right tool sets, have the skill sets, and they know what they're looking for once they're in there. Um, and, you know, on top of that, not only are they swift, but they're sophisticated. Uh, Wizard Spider is an e-crime syndicate. It's uh, been the top e-crime syndicate for the last two years. And, you know, these, they, they follow a seasonality to them, right? As we track their behavior, as we track their intent, the tools um, that they're using, we've noticed a trend, right? And so with Wizard Spider, uh, it, it, an interesting tidbit is they focus on education around September and October when you have kids coming back from uh, summer vacation and going back to school and they're a perfect target for ransomware. Um, and they switch their focus in Q4 towards hospitals and medical where flu and cold season starts. And you know those are the times when these organizations are most susceptible and are most likely to pay you know, if they do get infected with ransomware. 
So let's take a look at the process of how these adversaries execute their attacks. So we talked about this concept of a break time, all right? So initial access is step one, you get a footway into, um, into the organization. That can be a um, email click or a malware. You execute your script, you get persistence, you escalate to administrator uh, uh, privileges, you pr uh, provide yourself evasion against you know, endpoint detection systems, uh, <clears throat> You gain credential access into all the administrators, all those service accounts. Um, you do a discovery of the organization where you know the domain controllers, the pipelines are, all those kinds of things. And then you get to that step where you're ready to make lateral movement, which is when you pivot from your initial host that you've compromised to the rest of the organization. And so by stage eight and onward, um, the this represents a pivotal attack in the in the attack cycle and uh, your job as a defender gets significantly more complicated and more expensive this is where you start the attacker starts collecting the data creates a command and control with outside servers to exfiltrate that data and this is where you really get that impact uh, of you know your brand awareness your intellectual property being leaked and all those kinds of things and so to stay ahead, you know, what, what we've identified in industry is that you need to be able to detect these intrusion attempts within a minute. You need to have your security teams be able to investigate these in 10 minutes, and you need to contain and respond the attack within 60 minutes. But, you know, this is not easy. Uh, you know, you have most organizations receive at least 500 alerts a day, some in the thousands. And if you, you know, a human analyst, security analyst trained in um, identifying this is, can handle about 10. So that equates to, you know, roughly 50 security analysts to be able to uh, review all these potential threats, potential attacks against your organization. And the reality is our organizations are just not staffed to this. <clears throat> and, you know, hidden, like I said, hidden are in here are those um, threats, those are real, you know, within all your false positive, those are the actual threats where the attacker is coming in. And when you look at, you know, the very big breaches that you've heard of, Target, Equifax, this is exactly what happened. Their tools had these events, but they were not able to contextualize them. And they were not able to identify them because it felt that they were noise. And so uh, most organizations confirm that the biggest threat in their security posture is their SOC, their security operations team. And so at CrowdStrike, our intent is to make it a less of a nightmare for our customers. And we do that by eliminating the data overloads. We reduce, you know, 10 times of detections. Uh, as, we re as we identify these detections, we turn them into incidents and we prioritize them by providing them a um, critical, medium, low grade, and we provide additional context uh, which you'll be able to kind of see later in the demo. Um, with everything being under one platform, uh, we create you know a work a workbench for you that streamlines your investigations, um, so that everything that you need is integrated in one thing. You can just click and pivot and perform your investigation, um, and you know find the conclusion and ideally stop that breach. <clears throat> and lastly, we, you know, we, we provide a holistic overview and a, what we call a crowd score of your ecosystem. And you know, that covers your on-premise, your cloud and container workloads and gives you a, a view into the security posture of your entire organization's environment. And so one of the technologies that separate CrowdStrike from traditional endpoint platforms are our IOAs, our indicators of attack. And so our indicators of attack are um, a next level way of providing security, right? So you may have heard of indicators of compromise, which are what is used by um, traditional endpoint systems. These are your signatures, your exploits, vulnerabilities, hashes. Um, you know, it's kind of like if you were to um, come to a bank robbery, right? It's basically assessing, you know, looking at all the evidence that was left 
and assessing what happened. Where indicators of attack are more of your code execution, persistence, stealth, um, lateral movements, um, and hands-on keyboard activities. And so it, essentially it's more of, you know, rather than looking at the evidence, it's uh, looking at basically as, as things are unfolding, um, and using event streaming to kind of identify, you know, what is the intent of this behavior? And before the, the, the behavior is fully executed, we grade whether or not this is a uh, good, good intended um, event or if it is a malicious event and we stop it in its tracks before it gets a chance to execute. Um, so here to the right, you kind of see an example of an event, right? So uh, a process executes and enumerates on the file system to see what files it has. Um, it will delete your backups, you know, removing value shadow copies uh, if you're using Microsoft and a call on it to encrypt all the files that it identified, right? So what you're looking at is a chain of events that trigger a common ransomware attack. Now, as a, you know, a sec trained security analyst, anyone would be able to tell you that this is you know a, a kill chain to a ransomware attack so we take this um, and we throw it into our machine learning model and we identify this as a ransomware ioa um, and we take hundreds thousands of these um, similar variations of these processes and we package this up so that we're able to identify you know um, identify these kinds of attacks before they happen and so <clears throat> our threat engine or th threat graph, sorry, is really what powers the, 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 the model behind CrowdStrike, right? And so we have uh, over 10,000 customers today and all of their decisions are, you know, and, and events that are happening, they're being streamlined into our cloud threat graph, which powers the CrowdStrike uh, endpoint security. And so we have over 150 million IOA decisions that get processed through the threat graph per minute, uh, over 1 trillion events a day. Uh, and we're tracking over 170 different adversaries across the world. And <clears throat> this allows us to prevent threats, allows our security analysts to hunt proactively and investigate faster. Um, and just in 2021, you know, through the threat graph, we've been able to stop over 90,000 potential intrusions. And this kind of gives you a little bit of a overview of what we protect, right? As I mentioned, over 10,000 customers, uh, 10 million unique servers per day that we see across on-premise and cloud, 1.4 billion containers secured per day. And we are you know, deployed in over 25,000 cloud accounts across uh, Azure, AWS, and GCP. And what powers all of this is our single lightweight agent. Um, it's one Falcon agent that provides protection when you're offline. It doesn't use sig signature updates because it uses indicators of attack, not indicators of compromise. Um, really no user impact, less than 1% CPU overhead when does not require reboots. So you can deploy this at any moment in time um, without having to have large you know, scheduled uh, deployments and all those things. And as I mentioned, because we use indicators of attack, we're able to protect against known malware um, using our threat graph. We are able to protect against zero day attacks because we are measuring the intent of the action and not a signature or anything like that. Um, and similarly, we can eliminate ransomware dead in its tracks because we are able to identify those kill chains and identify that this is a ransomware attack. And so this lightweight agent powers our entire suite of tools uh, from endpoint security, cloud security, managed services, where we um, either can provide security analysts that are listening in and identifying those threats, you know, those 1% threats that the, our endpoint detection might not identify, but our security uh, analysts will. Or you can have Falcon Complete where you can have your organization's security uh, posture be fully handled by CrowdStrike. Um, you have security in IT operations, our threat intelligence that tracks adversaries and the, the malware. 
um, identity protection to enable a zero trust log management and our CrowdStrike store, which powers all of our various partner integrations. And so really what you get with CrowdStrike is this one platform for your hybrid cloud. Um, you, you know, you, you receive your runtime protection, your asset inventory of all your uh, resources across on-premise and cloud and containers, vulnerability management, um, identifying, uh, you know, unsecured packages, libraries, uh, things like log4j, um, and mapping them to CVEs that, you know, are crowdsourced by, our, by the security community. Uh, misconfiguration checks, and really, you know, all this to enable our customers and their security teams to perform proper threat hunting. And we do this, um, as I said, on, on servers, virtual machines, dock and containers, whether it's Docker or Podman. Um, and we also support, you know, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google Cloud. And so our Falcon Threat Graph integrates as well with Kubernetes, OpenShift, the underlying APIs in Kubernetes, and also integrates with uh, various cloud logs like CloudWatch and CloudTrail to build cloud-specific indicators of attack to protect against your to protect your cloud workloads. And as DevOps is, you know, the CI/CD um, is, is crucial, right? We want to be able to deploy all of our stuff automated, repeatable, and tested throughout the lifecycle. And so, to help with that, <clears throat> Crowd, as CrowdStrike, we try to integrate with your CI/CD environments. Um, you know, we have things such as our Falcon Cloud Workload Protection Image and Registry Scanning, where we um, integrate with various image registries and we scan your containers during build time. Uh, you know, you, we have integrations with Nexus, we have CrowdStrike has its own registry, and we also are able to provide, you know, things where you as DevOps engineers, you work in GitHub. So we have things such as GitHub Actions that allow you to, uh, to scan your images for vulnerabilities during your CI/CD deployments. Um, as you deploy your Kubernetes uh, containers, we have automated uh, protection for your Kubernetes, which we basically sidecar ourselves into your pods, and we can scale from you know from one pod to tens of thousands of pods, automated, seamless for you as a user. Uh, for users who are running container workloads but are not um, necessarily <clears throat> running Kubernetes, uh, but things such as Amazon ECS, Elastic Container Service, we provide integrations and native protection there. And for users who are working in, you know, who have cloud workloads, we have Falcon Horizon, our cloud security posture management, which analyzes, you know, the security posture of your cloud environments, multi-cloud, and provides you with actionable insights, um, such as, you know, you have EC2s that are publicly exposed or S3 buckets that are publicly exposed or maybe not encrypted. So all those cloud native um, misconfigurations, uh, all those, we, we kind of package them up and create that insight for you as uh, for your cloud security posture. And so lastly, um, Part of what Carlos is going to be demoing to you is something that we're very proud of is getting our certified Ansible collection for Mac, Linux, and Windows. Um, and as we move on, we are working on uh, our certified RPM package. Um, and lastly, what is something that is already in beta uh, is our certified OpenShift operator in a Red Hat marketplace that will allow you to protect your OpenShift containers um, directly and seamlessly. And so with that, I want to hand it over to Carlos to do some demos and play around with some malware. Thank you. Thanks, Musa. Let me uh, get my screen share going on here and we'll go ahead and get started. So, before I show this demo here, just full transparency, 
uh, two reasons that I pre-recorded this. Uh, one reason is I uh, did not want to uh, anger the demo gods. And the second reason I was trying to limit the mechanical keyboard sounds. Uh, but honestly, that's probably a mute reason as I'm going to be kind of clacking away here shortly. So before I get started with showing you the Ansible collection that Musa just highlighted, we are really proud to have just gotten that certified with Red Hat. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm just going to show you really quick the playbook um, that we have here. So we can just kind of look at Deploy Falcon. Uh, this is something that you'll see in our, not this exactly, but a very similar model. Um, if you look in our GitHub page, which I'll show uh, after the demo, um, kind of highlighting how we do or how a customer could use this Ansible collection to deploy, uh, to install and configure the Falcon sensor. Uh, so for example, here we have uh, three total roles in our collection. We have Falcon install, we have Falcon configure, and we also have Falcon uninstall for those uh, who would want, you know, if you're bringing up, tearing down uh, environments, it's just an easy way to clean it up. So I'm also adding here um, a tag to the Falcon sensor so that I can show you when we get to the console portion of it, uh, how that shows up. Go ahead and kick off this demo here. So basically, all we're doing is running Ansible against roughly 20 EC2 instances that I'm showing right here. I'm using the AWS EC2 dynamic inventory plugin here. And when I created the instances, I just made sure to kind of give them a tag so I, I could target them uh, easier. Uh, but you'll see that pretty much the collection runs uh, pretty quickly. Uh, it takes, I think, total for these 20 systems is probably around four minutes, four and a half minutes. So without having to sit here and show this for the entirety, I'll let it run and I will scooch over here and kind of talk about the collection and kind of to give more information as to um, how somebody could use this as Musa mentioned, it's not just for Red Hat, it's also for all Linux distributions, major distributions, I don't wanna say all of them, um, as well as Mac and Windows. Um, so this is the GitHub repository. This is the project, basically readme page here. And you can go in here and you can kind of see and get more information. These are the roles listed out. Each role has essentially a readme. Um, and then in the readme, you could basically just get a little bit more information as to how to use each role. So for example, if you're interested in installing the Falcon sensor, you can kind of check out all of the variables um, that we have for the roles. And we always kind of throw some example playbooks here. So one thing that was important for us to kind of manage here um, that we noticed a lot of customers wanted to have is kind of this n minus um, x version number so for example sometimes you may not want the latest falcon sensor sometimes you want a specific version and so this kind of allows a way for somebody to install falcon at a specific version um, and then there's some other stuff here you can have a sensor update policy so instead of you know up, instead of managing your sensor version via um, decrementing it here you could also in the Falcon console specify a update policy and then that will take place here. And just to highlight some of the other roles too. Uh, the biggest one will probably be the Falcon configure. This is where all the, the meat and bones is of, of the configuration process. So one thing to note here is that not all these options have the ability to set or delete. Uh, so we created this table here to kind of help customers understand that if they were interested in you know setting or removing specific options and again we give uh, certain examples of how to do this um, one thing is you can if you know your sid uh, which is kind of your identification uh, to use crowdstrike you can supply that here or if you have your api credentials you could do this and it'll automatically detect your your sid for you um, a lot of cool different things you can do on here that we kind of uh, took from the 
the documentation itself, what we really wanted to do with this module is we wanted to we wanted to kind of replicate the CLI, the Falcon CTL CLI, as much as we could on the Linux side. Um, so we ended up actually creating some Ansible uh, modules themselves. So if I go back here and just kind of give you guys a quick idea, we have two modules that we created. We created the Falcon CTL module, which is kind of the one-for-one -one, um, CLI version. And we also created a Falcon CTL info module, which is a way for uh, customers um, to kind of get a quick overview of specific uh, information that's on the sensor. So for example, if you wanted to know what tags you have on a sensor, you could use that. If you just wanted to see all the available options that you can get from the sensor, you could use that as well. And I'll show that in a little bit. So let's head back over here and looks like we're almost done here. So we'll just let this finish here. And while it's finishing, I'll come back over here and showcase another thing here. So as we mentioned, this is certified, a certified collection in the Ansible automation platform. So um, at the end of this, we'll have links, resources for you guys to kind of take back and use um, if you wanted to kind of follow up and, and check out where you could use this. But this is the uh, official certified version. But just as a as a note, this is generally kind of more downstream than what you would find in Ansible Galaxy. And the reason for that is that sometimes we are kind of doing quick bug fixes and we're kind of iterating through that in a faster process. So we're getting those kind of released quicker into the Galaxy. And then when we're happy with a certain release, we'll then upload a new version into here. So if you are a customer um, using the automation platform and you do notice that you know we're behind a few iterations than what's on Galaxy, uh, just know that we are working on always trying to maintain that as, as close to possible as we can. All right, so basically, um, what you see from this Ansible uh, run is it took about four minutes and 52 seconds for a total completion. Um, this is kind of a, a callback feature that Ansible has. It kind of gives you task breakdowns and times. If anyone's interested, I can give them the information for that. Um, and that is the deployment portion of it. And so what I kind of want to show now before I get into the recording that we did for kind of showing uh, what a detonation is. Um, let's go ahead and show you guys what I mean by using the Falcon CTL info module. So basically there's a couple ways that you can use it. Uh, you can specify um, certain options that you would like to get, or you could just run it like this. And this will give you for every system that is tagged in the inventory. Um, this will give you all the options for that. So just to give ideas of, of how somebody may potentially want to use this or integrate this into some other system. So again, this is running on those 20 uh, RHEL systems that are deployed on EC2 right now. Um, so you can see it has all this information, the AID. And if you were particularly interested if you wanted to do AID and tags as well. And there you go for each system, you're now able to just hone in on those specific uh, environment uh, options or Falcon CTL options that you want. So let's go ahead and show the fun stuff detonation portion here. So basically what I'm going to do here is show how we have two systems, both Red Hat 8.4 uh, systems. And one system has a prevention policy on it. And the other system 
the ones that are deployed here in the EC2 side of the house, um, they just have the default Linux policy. So all I did here is I just, I ran the uh, ping module so I can grab one of these hosts so I can SSH into it. So I'm SSHing into it right now and I'm gonna install Podman on this. And the reason I'm installing Podman on this is because we have a, a utility that we use here um, for demo purposes that we can kind of showcase some detections. So it's actually a detection container. And that detection container gives us almost like a little small environment that we can run some malicious attacks um, and keep it self-contained, but still be able to report that uh, through the Falcon agent. So this should be wrapped up here shortly. And again, one of the reasons I wanted to record this as well and just show this specific instance is so that I can switch over to the console after this and kind of show you um, what happened and what it looks like before we start introducing more noise. So this is just the uh, command to enter the detection container. So I'm going to go ahead and run that on both, system, on both systems here. So just for FYI, the top system here, the RHEL A2 demo, um, that is the system that has a prevention policy enabled on it, as opposed to the bottom system here does not have that enabled. So we'll see. So this is actually going to run the command control via remote access script. Um, so one thing to highlight here is you can see in the top one that it actually killed the process as opposed to the bottom one, it did not kill the process. So let's switch over to the Falcon console. Let me close that. Put this guy back up here. So this is for anyone who has never used our product this is the dashboard that you typically log into and have some information that you can kind of see here. Um, you can see the most recent detections. And again, this is showcasing uh, certain aspects of it. So for example, you can see here how much malware was prevented um, by the systems. Um, and then if you wanted to go deeper into the detections, you can go here. Uh, but this green check mark right here is really what we're going to showcase is in the, in the sense that that means that Falcon prevented and killed the process from actually being executed. And there's some more information on here. Uh, it actually looks much better if you have a 4K monitor. Uh, but since I'm using my MacBook here uh, just to keep, you know, make it a little bit easier for everybody to see, we'll just keep on going. Um, so what I wanted to showcase here is under host management, I just um, narrowed it down to systems running 8.4. And this is the row A2 demo that we have. And what I wanted to show here is that it's using the DevOps webinar prevention policy that I created. And this is the reason why it's able to kill the um, malicious command that we just executed, as opposed to the rest of these guys here. These are the other 20 instances that were spun up. Um, these guys are just using the default Linux and that's why I wasn't able to stop it. But it does show detections, which is still important because if somebody in your stock is listening to these things, they could act on it. The grouping tag is the variable that I added to that playbook. So this is how it shows up. And so it's just a way for you to be able to narrow down 
your um, systems if you're particularly interested in certain systems. So if we come on over to the detection side of the house, you can kind of see the same thing here, right? So this was the system that had the default Linux protection prevention policy, and this is the one where it actually killed it. And you can see right there, it says process killed, as opposed to that one did not kill the process. And you can kind of come into this and get a little bit more information and one thing I kind of want to showcase here is the Falcon sensor, even though it's deployed on a Linux host, a RHEL Linux host, it's still able to also capture things that happen on a container. So it's an important thing to notice that I didn't have to install anything extra to get that functionality. It's just out of the box, it's able to capture basically anything that runs on that host. And you can kind of see here the trail, which is which is pretty cool, right? So SSH'd into the system, bash shell, ran sudo podman, run C environment, container runtime environment, and then just kind of narrows down. And if we click on this one here, we can actually get the exact command that was run. You get information, right? So in this instance, it was the indicator of attack is that similar to a bash reverse shell. Gives you a little bit more information on it. Gives you the tactics and techniques. And there's also file details, host details, and some vulnerability information as well. So again, out of the box, when you install the Falcon sensor on your system, and in particular in, in this instance here, what this is showing us is um, kind of CVEs that are known in the world, right? That we can associate uh, via some database um, and we can show that on here per host. We also have the ability to see it per groups of hosts um, and things like that. But, um, I kind of want to transition into showing you guys what an incident would look like. So yesterday, as I was messing around with this, an incident is typically, you know, one or two events that are happening that are kind of flagged as being suspicious. So here was the command and control via remote access that was blocked. Um, and so you can kind of dig deeper into this if you were interested in seeing, you know, hey, what happened? Um, you know, one of the cool things here is, is all the different views that you get. Um, so for example, if we just wanted to kind of see a, a high level, <clears throat> excuse me, a high level summary, you can see commands that were executed. And then for each one, you can kind of see the tech, uh, tech, uh, excuse me, the tactics and techniques that were used. Another thing that a lot of people like to see is the graph and you can actually play it by time, it'll show you the different colors um, of, of when the events took place and how it actually progressed, as well as the events timeline, which again is a, is a pretty good breakdown of what happened, what took place. So one thing I also wanted to show case here is there's a lot of pre-canned um, reports, dashboards, visibility into systems. And this particular one, this is uh, just the Linux sensors. So you can kind of get an idea of um, what we have in this particular environment. So you can see here, we have some row 8.4 here. There's 24 systems right now. Um, and then you can get more information as to uh, recent uh, shell spawned by root, right? So uh, you can see here, this was a system that was recently done. Um, and there's more information in here. And another thing we wanted to showcase here too is, is kind of the actors associated. So as Musa mentioned in his presentation that we have all these various actors, state actors um, that are constantly out there looking to find a way into systems. And this just gives you a good kind of overview of the top players. And for example, here you can see Fancy Bear, we get dinged as we have related vulnerabilities that could potentially be exploited by a fancy bear. Um, so, you know, you can dig deeper into that and kind of get a, a better understanding of what that looks like. 
So one thing I want to kind of um, kind of do right now that I can say it's pretty much live is we're going to kind of create some chatter. Um, I thought about doing this normally via the you know SSHing into it and and running some commands, but I figured why not? Let's just use Ansible. Uh, so let's see what happens here. Just use the shell command and we'll pass in let's grab let's grab some commands here. From this later. Be honest, I have not tested this yet. So so far, that looks promising. So I'll run that. What I ran right there is um, it's it's executing um, a defense evasion via rootkit. Uh, I think it's Jinx rootkit is typically what it's referred to. So somebody tries to modify the or change the permission of a, a specific um, object module in Linux. Another one that we could run is that will basically show up as malicious activity is this command here okay so this one i might probably not be able to run just with all the I would have to Here. So we'll skip this one. We'll go to the console and we'll just see if we were able to kind of get a little bit more detections. And sure enough, you can see here, right? This was the defense evasion via rootkit that we ran. So you can see how the Falcon platform is able to see that. And we can get some information here. And then if we head back over to the Detections portion, give it a little refresh. So there you go. So now you can see how quickly it is. And if you go back to Musa's presentation where he talked about the breakout time and being able to detect this, uh, you know, within a minute um, to kind of be able to act on it, this is why it's critical to have this level of protection on your systems. Um, and hopefully, this Ansible collection that I've demoed today kind of gives you an easier way to deploy this. Uh, the whole point of DevOps is to automate as much as we can, reduce complexities, reduce you know actual manual typing, manpower itself, um, and be able to just do these things on some automated uh, process, whether it's running Ansible um, through Ansible Tower or using it in your CI CD build pipeline. So with that, that wraps the demo portion here. And let me stop screen sharing. And I'll turn it back over to Musa. Great. Thank you, Carlos. Yeah, and great demonstration. Um, as you guys can see, you know, the uh, the security that we provide is real time and <clears throat> Everything that you really need from a security perspective is all done from one console, one agent um, that's seamless to uh, deploy with you know various integrations that we have, such as what Carlos showcased here with Ansible. And let me share my screen here, and I'm just gonna. This will be also included in the presentation that we will um, have along as you know as a downloadable resource along with this webinar, but here are some of the links to the GitHub repo that Carlos showed, um, the G Galaxy, Ansible Galaxy uh, certified package, as well as the Redhead Marketplace. Um, <clears throat> so that way you can jump in here, um, look around, and ideally if you're using Ansible, um, start using this in your environments. Yeah, one thing I'd like to add to that is um, it's very, 
it's very beneficial to not only us, but to community in general. Um, for those who use our Ansible collection, if you guys have issues to please report those on the GitHub page, um, it makes it, uh, and it doesn't even have to be issues. It could just be feature requests, or you just want to discuss about certain things. Uh, it's, you know, it's part of the GitHub development process, right? We, we need the feedback from the community so that we can continue to make the product better. Um, so yeah, so appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because, um, you know, as, as another thing that we do under, our, you know, our cloud integrations is we actually are um, responsible for the SDKs that support this, right? So everything that you saw here is, you know, we designed everything API first and we provide a Falcon SDK for, I think, um, Python, Rust, Go, um, and now we're also building JavaScript, right? For you to be able to uh, take action onto this, right? And automate more of these, um, uh, you know, efforts, right? So you, you see this incident, well, you know, what are you gonna do with that? Is that gonna go to create a service now ticket for an analyst to start, you know, responding? Is it gonna page something out? All those various things. Um, and with, as, as Carlos said, with, uh, our SDKs, our integrations that we build, um, everything that we do, uh, we, we publish on GitHub and we are very active, right? And we, we, we look for the feedback from the community of the individuals who are using these tools to you know, provide improvements, to provide bug fixes, and we're very heavily active in those communities. So um, at this time, um, we'll shift over to the Q&A section of the webinar and answer any questions that you guys might have. All right, looking through here, um, looks like the only Q&A we had was about the gift cards, which are going to be announced at the end of this webinar. Um, give maybe one, one minute or so, see if any last questions come up. Otherwise, we can wrap this up. And I'm going to paste these links from the resources page um, for you guys to have easily accessible here. Um, and please note that you can also download the full deck from the handouts uh, link at the top right of this webinar. So real quick, just to go over the poll results. Uh, appreciate for those who were able to uh, put a response in, uh, just kind of going over it, it looks like 62% uh, of you guys are currently not CrowdStrike customers. We have about 23% that are and 15% that are thinking about it. Um, for the poll that was about what environments in your organization you're protecting today, I see that 9% uh, are trying to do their kids' phones, which is completely understandable. As a father, you're, you know, I know the, the, the family is basically like your organization, so you have to kind of treat it like a CEO maybe a CISO, uh, let's see, 39% are uh, interested in hybrid environments, 35% in cloud and 17% on on-prem. And for the Ansible question, it looks like the majority are using Ansible, which is, which is good to hear. Um, I definitely recommend the tool. It's, it's been very useful and helpful in so many so many environments and jobs in the past as well. So, um, so it looks like 23% have never heard of it or maybe never used it before, so. Awesome, and um, Carlos, I see a question just popped up by, um, I'm hoping I don't butcher your name, uh, Ihi Zogie um, asks, what environments is CrowdStrike available in? So uh, our, our uh, agent is available on Linux. It's available on just about every distribution of Linux, um, Mac, as well as Windows. Uh, and so we protect, you know, regular operating systems uh, that you might be deploying in VMware, you know, EC2, virtual machines in the cloud. And then we also support containers. So with containers, you have, you know, two options. You have our similar, uh, what we call our kernel module uh 
agent, and that is essentially the same agent that is you know installed in these operating systems, and that would be applicable for if you are running Kubernetes in your environments and you are looking to secure from a node perspective, uh, you can install one agent per node, and then that will listen to all your clusters, all your pods. And then we have also what we call our Lumos agent, um, and that is a agent that is specific for containers and particularly in those environments where you don't have privileged access into you know, the, the, the management plane. So think stuff as um, AWS uh, Fargate. So where you, know, you really just have exposure to the, the pods and the containers that are working, you don't have access to the underlying you know, bare metal where the container is running. So on those, we install the Lumos agent and that actually sits on a per pod basis. So it kind of scales out um, automatically with, with your resources that you have running in those pods. Hopefully that answers your question. All right, so if there's no other questions, um, we can kind of wrap this up. So if we can go to the last slide, Cody. Awesome. Um, yeah, just wanted to drop you guys a um, a link here and a QR to you know jump. And if you're interested, jump over here and get started. Right. So you can download this, get I believe 15 days free to install the endpoint in your environment. You know, you, if you're using Ansible already or curious to try, you can use this Ansible playbook, right, to install this on your host, or just, you know, download it as a simple binary and just, you know, get in there and just really see the power, uh, you know, that the CrowdStrike platform can offer you. Uh, so with that, we just want to say thank you. Uh, you know, I know I see see people from all around the world here. So want to just, you know, thank you for, for taking the time to be with us. Thank you for learning about CrowdStrike. And it was an honor hosting you guys. Thanks, everyone. All right, a quick reminder to our audience that today's session was recorded. So following this webinar, you'll receive an email with a link to access the recording on demand. You can also find it living on the DevOps website. Just visit devops.com slash webinars. Real quick, the four winners of our $25 Amazon gift card drawing. Our first winner is Ali S. Our second winner is Coffee T. Our third winner is Tony M. And our fourth winner is Melania R. Congratulations. Keep an eye on your inbox to claim that gift card. And if you don't find an email in your inbox, just check your spam folder. Carlos, Musa, I really appreciate you both being here with us today for putting together this presentation, the demo, um, and answering all the questions that we received today. So I, I really appreciate you both taking the time to be with me today. My thanks also goes out to Red Hat Marketplace and CrowdStrike for sponsoring this webinar. And my final thanks goes to you, our audience. So everyone have a great rest of your day. Please take a moment to fill out our post-webinar survey. And I hope to see you at a future TechStrong Learning webinar.